I think it's something that a lot of people do to try and come across as being artsy, but it's not necessarily as meaningful as they may have intended it to be. You can get some much better emotions out of your photo when the subject realizes you're taking the photo and connects when their eyes connect into the camera. I don't think this is a good photo. Okay. But I think it's it's good for the couple because there's a lot of rules in photography, right? Like you hear the rule of thirds and the golden ratio and there's all these rules about composition that people say you should follow. You don't have to. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today I'm here with Will Delaney. Hello Will, thank you for joining me today. Hey Martin, thanks for having me. I'm excited to critique some photos. Yeah, thank you. So the basic idea for whoever is watching us maybe for the first time is that uh, every week we have a small photography challenge where people uh, can submit their photos and I then invite guests to kind of share their opinion about the images you are going to see. Sounds great. Let's get into it. So let's take a look at the first image. I like this one. It's very moody and I really like how this light, it looks like it's early in the morning or late in the day and the light is coming through a, an alley or something between two buildings, something that's kind of really narrowing the light and that really helps draw your eye right to that person. So that part I really like because it really helps you narrow things down and focus on the main subject of the photo, which is this person here. One thing that I find a little bit distracting, this is just personally my thing with street photos is sometimes signs can look a little bit ugly. There's this lamppost on the right side. The lamppost as a whole, I think is fine in the photo, but on the lamppost, there's a couple signs there that if it were my photo, I'd probably clone stamp those out afterwards mm -hmm. just because I, I don't really like how they, they distract a little bit from the photo. It's not too bad because they're pretty dark. So it's the focus is still pretty much on the main subject there, but I, I'm not a big fan of those signs. In terms of the way the photo is edited, I also like it's it's pretty subtle. The colors are nice. It's not, uh, it looks really well balanced. It's maybe a little bit dark in the shadows, like the, the street here. It could maybe, you could bring up the shadows just a little bit so that it's not just completely black. Otherwise, I really like this photo. I think it's really nice. All right, thank you. Uh, so let's take a look at the second one. Okay, second one here. Interesting, this one, based on the grain and the colors, this looks like it was shot on film, which is interesting. You don't see a whole lot of that these days. I personally like to shoot on film for fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it helps slow me down a little bit and think a little bit more about the creative process. So I think that's fun. And also you don't get to see the images, so it's a good practice for <laughs> yeah. uh, doing your manual exposures and making sure that you know how to use the manual settings on the camera uh, instead of just shooting a bunch and then you can look at them and adjust. Um, so I respect that this was shot on film. That being said, other than that, I'm not a huge fan of this photo. Just the way it's composed, I don't really know how I feel about it. It's, we've got this person in the frame, but the person's being blocked by this tree and it's just a little bit busy. There's some stuff going on on the left side here, signs and some objects I can't really tell. It looks like the person's reaching for an umbrella. There's kind of a lot going on and it feels like I don't really know where to look when I look at this photo. I think this photo, I understand with street photography a lot of the time, it's a quick snap and there's, you don't have time to reposition or go to a different spot and get the photo that you want. If this person rotated around the tree going this way, they could kind of get the person's face in the shot without the tree blocking it. I think this would have made a much nicer photo. Not that they shouldn't have the tree in the foreground at all, but I think the way they have it positioned is just taking away from the photo rather than adding to it. Do you have some like uh, insights about how you recognize if the scene has a potential? Because when I look at this, uh, we can, you know, say the photographer could kind of move around or you know, maybe do other things. But I sometimes find that some scenes are, you know, better than others. And to be honest, when I yeah. look at this scene, it might be pretty difficult to get some amazing shot because of uh, the layout of everything and it I feel like even though I can move around it will always end up being very massive photo. I agree this is probably not something that I would have taken a photo of if I was walking down the street with my camera. I, I think there's some things that could have been done to make it better but I think mm. you're right I don't think this scene is really a, a winner for a, a really good photo. Mm. In terms of like how I would look at it and pick out what I think is a good scene, I think that's kind of tricky to mm -hmm. really decide. Like it's just something that it just kind of feels right in the moment. Something that interesting to look at, but 
is also sort of still a part of the the everyday. I think there's a weird, there's mm. an interesting balance in there. But yeah, this is like this photo could be better, but still, I I don't think anything mm. here is is super photo worthy. And what do you personally prefer when you walk around, maybe try to shoot some street photography? Do you rather find a scene and wait for a subject, or kind of follow the subject to? to click into better scene? What, what? I would say when I do street photography, which I'll, I'll preface by saying that I'm not uh, an avid street photographer. I mm. do it for fun sometimes, but it's not my my main type of photography that I do. Um, but when I do street photography, I like to focus more on people's faces and their mm -hmm. facial expressions. It's a little trickier with street photography because again, things are happening kind of in the moment and you it's not like you can say, hold on, stand there, I'm going to take your photo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe you could try that. But so it can be a little tricky. But I think when you can see the person's face, and make that connection, especially if you can get them to look at the camera. Because um, when I do street photography, I use my big 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So mm -hmm. people notice me pretty quickly. And I know that makes some people nervous. You see a lot of street photos of where the subject doesn't know the photo is being taken. Like in this photo, this lady or whoever it is obviously doesn't know that this photo is being captured. She's oh, yeah. looking away. <laughs> But I think you can get some much better emotions out of your photo when the subject realizes you're taking the photo and connects when their eyes connect into the camera mm. i think that makes a much better photo in my opinion not that every photo has to be like that but oh, yeah. when i when i take street photos that's what i like to go for all right let's take a look at the third one this is interesting i see what they're going for here so they they've got this the guy's head in the foreground like looking up at the the ride here i think there's a way this could have been done it worked but i don't like how they did this i don't like how they put uh the foreground with the the ride there in the background mm. for one i don't like that the the top of the ride there is cut off i would have liked to see because it looks like it's almost the whole thing is in the shot so it would have mm. been nice to see the whole thing i think the cropping is a little bit weird honestly i think maybe if this photo was just a little bit wider in general it would have been nicer because then i'm also looking at the bottom of the photo of this guy's head and i'm thinking i like i see what they were going for they're including a foreground here and they're including a someone Uh, like an observer and yeah and that adds an extra element to the photo but i think the way they did it they cut off like halfway through the back of the head and i think if it was a little more zoomed out a little or just like a couple steps back and you you got more down to the shoulders um in the shot and also the whole ride in the background i think that would have looked nicer or maybe have a few people in the shot looking up at this because the way it's framed it it almost looks like it was an accident Mm -hmm. It looks like they were trying to take a photo of the ride and this guy just kind of stepped in front of the photo. Would you rather He's prefer not... vertical photo than horizontal? Yeah, I think I think vertical would have definitely worked better because I just want some more room on the top and some more room on the bottom. I think it could still work horizontal, mm -hmm. but then you also have, you're right, because you also have all of this negative space on the left and right side, which is fine, but it mm -hmm. is a little much. So it, it, I think this would have worked better as a vertical like two by three ratio uh, instead of this horizontal because it just feels like this guy's head is in here by an accident instead of instead of intentionally mm. talking about uh formats and um, orientation crops i know um you do uh, a lot of uh, wedding photography right do you have like a yeah. personal preference uh for shooting um you know horizontally or vertically would you like more i probably shoot vertically more and i think that has a lot to do with how instagram has affected my photography which i don't really like mm -hmm. uh i think it's i think it's subconscious I, i mean i've realized it now but i i think i started doing it without realizing it um because vertical photos on instagram usually do a little bit better because you can have a four by five vertical photo mm. and it takes up more of your screen so when you post photos on Instagram, you, you do vertical. Mm. And I think that, which is not necessarily a good thing, but that has caused me to shoot vertically more often than horizontally because I'm thinking, oh, these people, when it's a wedding, I'm still thinking these people are going to post on Instagram. Or if I'm taking the photo for me, I think, well, I mm. might post this on Instagram. So recently I've been a little more conscious of that. And because if it's something that you have a few seconds to take a photo of, if it's not, because every once in a while you, you get a shot that's like, like you have to get it right in that moment or else you miss it. But if you have a few seconds, uh, like a little bit of time to get the photo. I try to do both um, because I never know what I might want to use the photo for later. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Especially so for I, clients, right? Exactly. Yeah, especially for people. Do you have like a feedback, people. maybe feedback of their favorite photos? Because I know even though 
you might get, I don't know, 50, 100, 200, 500 photos uh, from the wedding, you probably tend to keep 10 favorite photos. Uh, do you mm. have some kind of feedback if they rather prefer like a uh, vertical photos or horizontal ones or i don't know for sure actually that's a good question because i think everyone's a little bit different mm. some people just want their photos to post on social media and mm -hmm. some people are going to put them in frames and you know hang them up in their house it really depends on their intention i when i deliver my photos i use a, a gallery service that allows the client to to favorite the photos that they like the best and then mm. i can see which ones they favorited so I suppose I could go through that and, mm. you know, um, and see which ones, if it's more vertical or horizontal, I would guess more people would like vertical photos because they're thinking like me on the phone, like the phone's vertical okay. and they want the photos to be on the phone. But that's just my guess. I'm not entirely sure. Um, All right. But that's interesting. I would have to look into that more. <laughs> yeah. You now can I'm leave curious. a comment under the video if you end up finding out percentage of absolutely uh, all right let's take a look at the next photo oh this is interesting this is this is what i was kind of saying before like this is one of those like it happens in the moment and then mm. it's gone kind of photos there's a lot going on here it looks like well again actually this looks like i mean it's grainy it might that might just be an edit but it may this could have been shot on film do you know if this was shot on film uh i'm not sure I would be lying, but if I had to guess, I would say like 60% it's film. It looks, I'm leaning more towards film, which again, adds to that sort of spontaneity, if it was later I guess. In the day we could, we could, you know, probably say it was like a higher ISO, but this seems to be shot during the daylight. Uh, yeah, it looks, it looks like uh, some somewhat near midday, maybe in the yeah, morning, yeah. but yeah, but there is really it, is, no it is very for... grainy. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very grainy for a, a photo in the middle of the day. It's, it's interesting though, like it's, this isn't a type of photo that I would normally take. I would never take a photo like this, but I think it's still a good photo. I mm. just, it's not something that I would think to do. It's very busy. There is a lot going on here. You have, because the focus here, this person in the foreground, this this lady here looks like they're just sitting on the beach is the focus of the photo. They're, they're what's actually in focus, but the action is kind of happening behind here. Mm. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but there's this little kid running by, maybe <laughs> the dad there. Yeah. And then there's this other lady in the background. This makes for an interesting action photo. And it definitely tells a story. I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the story is, but I feel like you can, it takes... You can imagine. Yeah, if I can imagine... Yeah. I could like, I could create a narrative in my head around what's going on here. Like this girl is just trying to enjoy the beach, but the, the kid is running around and the, the dad is annoyed. He's kind of looking over his shoulder like, ah, what's this kid doing right here? And yeah, I think there's, it's a little bit busy, but I think it works. And it's also, it feels like a type of photo that you're lucky to, to snap and then it's gone and there's there's no redos or no no second yeah. photo or anything. So if that's I like it from that perspective that it's very much a in the moment thing. And I so I, I like this photo. Let's take a look at the next one. This is interesting. The first thing that stands out to me, there's a heavy vignette on this photo. And well, just in general, I'm not a fan of heavy vignetting. I think if you can notice the vignette, then it's probably too much. But specifically in this photo, I'm not a fan because subjects who are in focus are the people on the edges of the frame mm. here. So they're the ones we want to see. It's already cropped kind of awkwardly. If these people in the foreground are the main subject, you would want the photo to be a little bit wider and not have them so close to the edge. And the vignette kind of just adds to that because not only are they the thing that you want to be looking at, not only are they they right on the edge of the photo, but then you're also darkening the edge of the photo and making them less noticeable. This lady in the background mm. here um, in the white shirt, she's a little bit out of focus, but she's the brightest point in this image and she's kind of in the center. So your eyes actually go to her first. That's where I looked first, mm. is at this lady who's, as far as I can tell, isn't even really supposed to be a part of this photo and then the two ladies on the side are i'm just yeah I th and there's also a very busy background i there's not enough things isolating the subjects of this photo hmm. i i can't really tell if it's supposed to be these ladies in the foreground or if this is supposed to be a story about the lady in the background who looks like she's grimacing at these <laughs> ladies <laughs> yeah. she looks she looks really upset and then there's also just there's so many people and signs and things going on in the background that's yeah, a little bit distracting especially the yellow well. one is really distracting yeah the the money exchange sign kind of coming out of the 
the head of the lady on the right. Mm. I think it's a good idea to have your main subject of the photo to be isolated in some way, whether that's because the background is blurry or mm. because they are brighter than the rest of the photo or the just the composition. But I think you need to do something in order to isolate your subject and and make the viewer look where you want to want them to look and it uh, doesn't really feel like it's happening in this photo so for that reason i'm not a big mm. fan of this one do you personally use vignetting for your uh, photography maybe to bring uh, like uh, attention i do uh, occasionally but never that much like in lightroom i'll i'll maybe do like minus five on the slider okay uh, and i don't usually go more than that what i what i like to do instead is add a radial adjustment like a mask mm. over top of my subject and bring up the exposure just like 0.1 or 0.2. Mm -hmm. um, and then that makes the subject a little bit brighter in the image mm -hmm. and helps draw the attention in instead of just adding a vignette. And because this vignette really just darkens the corners, it's especially once it gets strong like that, it doesn't really draw you into the subject unless the subject is right in the center of the frame, which in this case, they're not. Okay. So I think a vignette has, has very specific use cases, but I do use it sometimes. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so we got the, the rain on the window in the foreground is in focus, and then we got these people walking by in the background. I think it's nice. I think it has a nice sort of relaxing feel to it, like you're sitting inside on a, and it's nice and cozy on a rainy day, like maybe you're in a coffee shop or something. And I, I like that feel to it. I think the, the raindrops on the glass type of photo is a little bit cliche. It's one of those things like taking photos on train tracks. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those those things that feels like something you do when you're starting out photography and you you see the the raindrops and you're like, oh, if I get really close, I bet this will look really nice. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, I think it's something that a lot of people do to try and come across as being artsy, but it's not necessarily as meaningful as they may have intended it to be. I, I do like it though, because like I, I do like the sort of story it's telling, but the way they told the story, I think is just a little bit cliche. Okay, these guys are dressed up in suits. This looks like, this almost looks like a wedding photo. This okay. looks like, uh, now this might just be three guys walking down the street that looks like, is that the, the Tower Bridge in London in the background? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just based on these guys are dressed up nicely. There, there's a few of them walking. This kind of looks like a, a photo you'd take like walking to a location for a photo on a wedding day. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a bad photo, but it's also nothing special. The one thing I noticed you can tell because of the, the tower bridge in the background there is a little bit crooked. This photo is slightly tilted, mm -hmm. which um, I think that's an easy fix and you can just crop it and rotate it just a little bit. That's There's a lot of distracting elements in this photo. That's one of them. The other one is that there's this looks like it was shot at a very high aperture. It's I mean, it looks like the middle of the day because you can see a little bit of motion blur on their, their feet here as they're walking. Instead of increasing the shutter speed to account for how bright it was outside, it looks like they increased the aperture instead. Hmm. Um, like this was shot at like f10 or f16 something very high because them they're pretty sharp but the background is also very sharp i think that makes the photo a little too busy because I, I i can't tell if the bridge is supposed to be part of the subject of the the photo or if it's just these guys um the the little the 999 um on the uh that little sign on the that's also kind of distracting that's something i would maybe clone stamp out i think this photo so to make this photo good, because it's not a bad photo. I think if this was a photo, if they took it a few seconds earlier, because they're walking right by them, right? Mm. I think for one, you would have made a better emotional connection with the guys in the photo. You, They were walking towards you and you took a photo mm. and you had their faces in it. I think one, that would make it better. And then two, to have it at a lower aperture so that the background, I, I don't think the background needs to be like super blurred out. I'm not one of those photographers that's like every photo needs to be like insane bokeh. You can't see anything in the background. I, I think it's okay to have a, a fairly in focus background, but this background is very busy. And I think that if it was just a little bit blurrier than it is right now, I think draw focus into the, the guys in this photo and you'd be able to pay attention to their, what their emotions are saying a little bit better. All right. Thank you. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, I really like the colors in this one. When you talk about color contrast and color theory, there's you look at the color wheel, right? Everyone's seen the color wheel. Mm. And you usually take two colors on either side of the color wheel or contrasting colors and they look really nice together. In this case, orange is on one side of the color wheel and blue is on the opposite side of the color wheel. So when you have this sort of uh, this orange wall kind of here, the orange in the skin tones and then this 
sort of blue wall and these blue accents on the orange wall. It's really nice because it's kind of, I, I don't know if it was intentional, but there's, there's not really any other colors in this image, hmm. which is really nice. And that's something I like to do in my photos, even if uh, they weren't necessarily captured that way when I'm adjusting the, the HSL in the editing, I like to to mute other colors so that there's two prominent colors. And that's, that's what's happening in this photo, whether that's just how the photo was or if they edited it to, to sort of be like that. I'm a big fan because the colors just, it's a really nice quality of light too. They're just being hit by the shade here. This is an example of there's a lot going on, but I think it's done in a good way because the first thing your eyes go to is this girl here walking with these bags because again she's the brightest point she's also what i think is in focus it's hard to tell because she's pretty close to the background but mm. it looks like she is in focus and then you've got these guys on the left that you look to next they look like they're having a an interesting conversation they're kind of in the shadows it looks a little bit shady a little a little bit sketchy maybe because mm. they're like <laughs> hidden in the darkness yeah and i think that's kind of interesting and then you have this other guy on the right side who this looks like maybe this is like a shop or something that he's he's buying something from. Um, I overall this is a I really like this photo. The the only thing I maybe would have changed if I could would be to take a few steps to the right and have it shot straight on so that mm -hmm. the subject was right in the center of this uh, this doorway in the background. I think that would have made it look a, a lot stronger. But again, I also understand under the circumstance, this is something that was shot quickly and then the moment was over. It wasn't something that they could really plan. Okay. So so it, I, my critique is is very subjective because I know that it's not necessarily something that they could have done in the moment, but I just think that still would have made the photo a little bit better. Um, but I still really like this one. Moving on to the next one. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure what they were going for here. I There's this dog in the foreground, but he's blurry. And then there's a, like, it looks like a wedding, like a couple that just got married in the yeah, background That's actually here. your thing, right? This is a wedding photo. Yeah, I wouldn't shoot a wedding photo <laughs> like this per se. I think it's a funny photo. I think if this is like, if this is the bride and groom's dog, if they're like, yeah, that would I don't be know. cool. I, Photo bomb I, I the don't, shoot. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't bring my dog on on my wedding shoot personally, but maybe if you're like a big dog person and and you brought your dog on the shoot, I think this is a funny photo for the couple to have. Hmm. Um if if this is their dog. Yeah, I think it's the kind of they're kissing in the background and it's almost like the dog is looking over at the camera like what's going on? I think if this is a photo for the couple and it's for their dog or it's a photo of their dog, I think like I, I don't think I don't think this is a good photo. OK, but I think it's it's good for the couple if that's what it's for. Like this is something if I was a big dog person and I brought my dog to a photo shoot, I think this would I would be really happy to receive a photo like this because it's kind of funny in terms of the actual composition. There's a lot going on here. The dog is taking up most of the frame. It's almost like a meme. It is. It feels like a meme. It feels like there should be some text over the photo. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't really know what to think about this photo <laughs> because it's it's not like in terms of the composition, it's not very good because the dog is, if it's a photo of the dog, the dog's out of focus and also just a little too close to the camera because that's the other thing. This might just be a photo someone took of their dog and there happened to be a couple in the background. Okay. Like this might not be a wedding photo. I'm just, I'm guessing here, but if it's, if it's just a photo someone took of their dog and there's a random couple in the background getting their photos taken it's it's a really weird photo my guess is that they just <laughs> used the situation and kind of juxtaposed the dog to create like this this layer and i think the the black thing maybe that's a bag on the right side of the frame that it's kind of cut off uh, might be like a bag of actual photographer who is taking like a yeah. professional photo and then th that person just kind of like tried to make the dog look like he wants to interrupt the photo kind of like walking into the frame right but that's just my that's what guess. it feels like I, it feels yeah. like they the couple is posing for their own photo separately yeah, yeah. and then someone decided to take this photo yeah, yeah i will say they capture the dog's expression pretty good yeah like yeah, the yeah. dog's looking the dog's looking right into the camera and i think that's pretty funny and i also um, kind of like how he how the dog is out of focus because it makes you think like the, the focus of the photographer was the kissing couple when the dog kind of walked in the frame, which yeah. if the dog was in focus, it would be just a photo of a dog with, with the couple uh, being blurry out of focus in the background. I don't think it would have 
uh, such an impact, such a funny kind of you know feel to it, like it has uh, at the moment. Yeah, I, I like I I don't think this works very well as like an artistic sort of photo, but I mm. think it is a very funny photo. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, this is nice. Speaking of artistic photos, this is very nice. There's like this looks this looks set up. It it looks like I could be wrong, but it looks too too well framed for yeah, this to yeah. just be. Yeah, the composition be, is really nice. Yeah, to just be like a street photo that just happens to to happen. This person was like I think this was set up. Uh, but it is a very nice photo. The sky kind of is. There's some greens on the on the left side in the shadows here. It's kind of this photo has a tint to it that is uh that I would say is not ideal but the the sort of colors i like this person looks like they have some pretty bright reddish orange hair and then contrasting with this bright blue bike and the yellow basket on the front makes them stand out really nicely even though they're very small in the photo this is what i was talking about before about like the subject in this photo is isolated even though the background isn't blurry and there's there's nothing specific about the composition Hmm. necessarily that isolates them just the colors going on and it also helps that they're they're positioned like this photo was taken the by the cyclist here is riding in between these black posts and if they took the photo with one of the black posts either behind or in front of the subject that would have ruined it a little bit but the subject is kind of like perfectly framed in hmm. all of these elements here the composition is very nice i like that they got right down to the ground uh and you can also see the reflection in the water and i also just i really like the colors of the photo other than that bit of a green tint going on. I think this photo could have been a little more cropped in. Mm -hmm. I think if it was, I think if it was just this, I'm not even sure what this is in the background, but this, this sort of reddish wall mm -hmm. in, the, in the background, I think it was cropped all the way in. I think that also would have made a good photo. Mm -hmm. And, but this is still a very, very nice photo. It just has sort of a, an, a bit of a tint going on that I'm not a fan of, but I do, I like every other part of the photo. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, so this photo is, it definitely tells a story. It looks like a foot or a leg is hanging out the back of this truck or a hand. I think it's a, I think it's a leg, right? Like that looks like someone's yeah, foot. Yeah. Whether it's real or maybe it's like a Halloween decoration or something. Uh, oh, painted. I don't know, but yeah. something going on here. I think it makes for a good photo. It, it tells a good story because the technical qualities of this photo are not very good. It looks like it was maybe taken just on a phone as the yeah. person was driving from the car yeah through the yeah window. from the car so like the photo is very pixelated it's crooked it's but but that's not really the point of this photo i think i think the point is just what on earth it makes you wonder what on earth is this this <laughs> yeah. human limb doing sticking out of this vehicle um like it it tells a story and i think that's good enough to make this a good photo even though the other elements aren't very like it's not good from a technical aspect i don't think a photo needs to be although it's nice when it's a photo is taken and it's high quality and it's very mm -hmm. sharp and the focus is perfect and everything's perfect about it i don't think you need to judge every photo from that standpoint because i'm i'm looking at this photo as someone who's just driving and like oh i'm gonna pull up my phone and just what is that going on i'm just gonna take <laughs> yeah. a photo of it so i wouldn't critique this one as harshly as i would another photo because i understand the circumstances that it was just something that kind of happened they were just driving and they noticed this but it's i like it because it does tell a story and now I'm wondering why is there this foot sticking out of here? Like, is is it a prop or is it is someone asleep back there and they they forgot and <laughs> they drove the truck away? Like, I now I want to know. So I think it works because it, it makes me want to know more and it it tells the story. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Interesting. So there is a lot of negative space in this photo, which looks like it was done intentionally. I wouldn't frame a photo like this personally, but I can see what they might be going for here. You frame someone this small in the photo mm. and leave this much negative space, it's either an accident because you don't know what you're doing or it's intentional and you did it for a very specific reason. And I think in this case, just because this is a very nice photo, this looks like it may have been taken in a studio uh, just based on the, the quality of light here. It looks like this was intentional. And so I think what the photographer is trying to, to talk about or to to say in this photo is has something to do with the this person's looking out into the unknown into the void into and there's all this darkness around them like they're supposed to feel very small in the photo and i i think in from that perspective it works i i also think if you want to convey that sort of emptiness and 
uh, feeling, maybe feeling alone. I, again, I don't know exactly what they were going for, but that's kind of the feeling I get from this. I think a horizontal photo would have worked better in this case, because if you have someone, if you keep the person over on, say, the left side of the photo, mm -hmm. for example, and then you have all this open space, because she's not looking, the negative space is above her. Okay. She's not, she's not looking up at the negative space, right? She's looking sort of away from the camera. If she's looking away and you have a vertical photo, sorry, if you have a horizontal photo and she's looking out into like all of the horizontal negative space, I think that would work better to tell a narrative about looking into the unknown or the the darkness or or whatever exactly this photo is trying to go for. But the quality of light in it is very nice. I, I like how they lit this photo. In this case, I like that you can't see the person's face because it just, I think it works better for what they're trying to go for here. So although this is, I don't know, this is a good example of, because there's a lot of rules in photography, right? Like you hear the rule of thirds and the golden ratio, and there's all these rules about composition that people say you should follow. You don't have to, but I think it's important to know them because then when you, when you don't follow them, when you break the rules, you break them with intention and you do it on purpose like this photo is clearly is clearly breaking those rules about negative space and composition but doing it in a way that feels like they did it on purpose and they're they did it because they want to convey a certain emotion so i think they were really successful in that sense let's take a look at the next one i don't know how i feel about this photo it's it's not a bad photo it just it feels kind of like a snapshot like it just feels like like a vacation photo or something like like from a parent they they took their kid to the this ride and just took a photo kind of as they were going by i don't really feel like there's a lot of planning or art artistic thought in this photo it just kind of feels like oh I just look up and take a photo real quick that being said it's not bad it's just I personally I don't really see it doesn't really tell a story in my opinion maybe I'm just missing it but mm -hmm. to me it doesn't really tell a story and it's uh there's not really a main focus in the photo there's there's all of these people in the photo but there's not just one of them that really stands out I think and so so compositionally, I think it's, I don't really think it works. Overall, it just feels like just kind of a, yeah, just a snapshot, just a quick little a photo that was taken. And it's it's not bad, but it's just nothing mm. special. I like the separation of the subject, though. Even, even though it's probably not that hard to get it because of the nature of... Uh you know, how people perceive it. Yeah, it's not a bad photo by any means. And I, I do, I like that the, the people on the ride are um they are kind of isolated by this solid blue background there's no clouds in the sky so they're you know they're kind of isolated there and that's nice but it does kind of feel like uh a photo that a parent just took when their kid went to go on the ride that's the feeling i get from it let's let's take a look at the last one. Oh, this is one of my photos <laughs> <laughs> all right so i can critique this one now interesting um this is a photo i took about two or three years ago now i took it for a school project actually um i i did a i had to make a photo book and i made a photo book about street photos that i took at night the things that i i like that i did about this photo is i like that i was low to the ground to capture these reflections on the the water here i like that there's I think the this couple here on the left makes for subject of the photo some things I would do differently. One, looking at this now, I haven't looked at this photo in a, in a good while, <laughs> um, but it looks a little crooked. I don't think I straightened it properly in editing. It, okay. it looks a little bit tilted this way, and that's that's bothering me. Another thing is I want these this couple here walking away to be the subject of the, the photo, but there's a lot of like this bike is going by in the background and kind of intersects with them and makes the photo. I think this is a very busy photo and I, I would have liked to not have this bike going through here. There's also this parked bike on the left side that's a little distracting and a lot of street signs. I, if I remember correctly, I think I did clone stamp out some distracting street signs, but I don't think I did enough. I think there's a lot in this photo that I would have liked to remove to make it a little more, a little more so just so you can focus in on the subject a little bit better hmm. one thing I, I did intentionally here is these office buildings up in the the left in the or sorry up on the right side here in the darkness they're they're very like bluish green tint yeah i was street... about to say that it's it's interesting the colors are kind of like binary i would yeah, say like so binary yeah that was intentional i i warmed up these street lights a lot uh, with a local adjustment and then i uh, i intentionally um i think i did this if i'm remembering correctly i th i did this in a way it's probably pretty inefficient i'm pretty sure i brought this into photoshop and like uh painted an adjustment layer Okay. on each of these windows. I think I could have done that a lot easier, but I, um, I, I intentionally made these 
buildings look kind of blue because uh, I wanted to create some some separation there. And that part I still like about this photo, but everything else, I think it's a little busy. I think I could have done better. <laughs> what do you think about this photo? Talking about the colors, I find it interesting. I wouldn't say I particularly like it or dislike it. I'm usually, I usually don't really like the lights. Those lights, those colors don't bother me at all. Uh, it's interesting tone of uh, warm color. I kind of like uh, like the lamps. I, th I think the background for where it was shot, the background is pretty busy, especially with, with the windows, which create uh, like this rhythm, this uh, repeating, or also like maybe like leading lines. So for, for what I think would work best would be, because the foreground is so busy, I would say the scene should be almost like empty, maybe catching like one subject we could kind of focus on. Uh, so the things you mentioned, like uh, the bike that's being cut off and the bicycle, which is kind of interfering with the main subject, which is being uh, that couple, is a little bit distracting. Uh, it's often very hard to make photo work when people are shot from behind because you kind of losing all the emotions. Uh, I agree. For where and how this was shot, I can kind of see maybe having someone maybe a little bit closer uh, as a silhouette kind of looking into this because what it makes me feel is the, the size of the city is kind of like overwhelming. So I would kind of maybe work with this emotion maybe have maybe a kid or someone standing in the foreground kind of looking uh, on that like big city which which might not be big at all but the way it was shot from the the ground level makes me think uh, but it could also work with just having like an empty scene and a bicycle maybe hitting like a reflection or something like that but i think for this scene there are too many subjects and some are a little bit colliding, yeah, like overlapping. I agree, it's definitely too busy. And I, I also think it would have been nice to have the subject, uh, like someone walking towards the camera instead of away. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, that helps. Or maybe sure. I'm just thinking about it, maybe using those those windows, and I, I can see this being really difficult, to have maybe like a, a person or something that would be mirroring uh, the same pose as maybe the main subject uh, on the street. Uh, that would be cool, but it would be also very uh, hard to get, right? It's tricky to, it's it's one of those things where like, and I, I definitely did the same thing critiquing other photos today where we can talk about the best way to like oh, yeah, put a yeah. person into this shot, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, you're shooting by yourself out on the street. <laughs> it's uh, in practicality, it's, it's tricky to, to line someone up in the shot exactly how you want it. Um, but you're right, it still would have made the photo much better. All right, so thank you, Will, for joining me today. It was a nice critique and so very insightful. And I would also like uh, to invite people to your uh, YouTube channel and to your socials where you share your photography. Thank you. Yeah, I had a great time today. It was fun critiquing photos. Um, I used to do this on TikTok, actually. I had a whole series where I critiqued people's photos and I stopped that a little while ago, but it was, it's fun to get back into it. All right. So thank you and have a great day. Thanks. You too.